Indian Supreme Court rules religious conversion can't be for the purpose of charity. Um, can't be the purpose of charity. The Supreme Court of India recently called charity, quote, quote, with the intention of religious conversion, dangerous. There is nothing wrong with charity by religious groups, but the same cannot be said if the purpose behind the, an act is for religious conversion, said the Supreme Court on December 5th. The division bench of Justice M. R. Shaw and Justice C. T. Uh, Ravi Kumar approved the petition of the Bar uh, BJP leader Ashvini Up Upadhyay which moved the court against deceitful religious conversion and rejected all kinds of interventions. The matter at hand is, quote, very serious, the bench insisted, while stating how conversion offering food, grains, medicine is wrong and alluring is dangerous. Quote, if you believe that particular persons should be helped, help them. But it can't be for conversion. Allurement is very dangerous. It is a serious issue and is against the basic structure of our constitution. Everyone who stays in India will have to act as per the culture of India, the bench said. Quote, the purpose of charity should not be conversion. Every charity or good work is welcome, but what is required to be considered is the intention. So let me get a little bit of background. There is a petition that this guy put before the Supreme Court where he's asking the central government of India to just basically take more notice to the issue of forced conversions, unlawful conversions, da da da, and basically collect more information about it, take it more seriously and treat it as a real issue. Now, there are a multitude of states in India that have anti-forced conversion laws. Eight in particular are under the realm of religious freedom bills but the religious freedom bill is actually like putting extra steps or extra surveillance on couples in particular interfaith couples who are getting married and there was a particular case that came forward in the case of the state of madhya pradesh um i pronounced that wrong and uh where in that state, it is enforced where you have to give a magistrate at least 30 days notice of your religious conversion before it happens. Otherwise, you and the people who have facilitated it and who are present for it, da, 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 can be prosecuted and fined or even brought to jail. In some cases, these in some states, these cases are non-bailable offenses. So this statement by the Supreme Court came forward when they were discussing about um forced religious conversion, not in the sense of a interfaith relationship, but in the realm of charity. And um, Armin, like, what is your initial reaction to this? I, I mean, I've seen so many people be concerned about these mass conversions, especially Christian. This is mostly about the Christian ones, isn't it? Because that is the main one that is happening in, in India. Um, well, no, they also freak the F out about love jihad and Islamic conversion. I know, but I know, but the mass conversions done by organizations, that is like Christian missionaries in India. They have a major thing. You see so many, so many videos we've seen of like giant groups of people and there's in a Christian gathering and they're all being converted at the same time from Hindus. I don't know if this could be... Uh, being from Hinduism to Christianity, and a lot of Hindus are f seeing this as a threat to the um, demographics of their country, right? Um, I think like they are overused. Uh, when they say forced confessions, I don't know how forced it actually is because it looks pretty voluntarily, but people are saying like, no, they've been brainwashed or they've like been giving food or something. I mean, that might make it questionable, but it doesn't make it forced. Um, I mean, I don't know. Is it? I don't know the intentions between behind this rule. Is it because they're just afraid of people willingly leaving Hinduism and they're trying to preserve the Hindu culture of India? Is that what so, it is? I'm going to treat this news in general with a bit of um, like grain of salt, for lack of a better term, because the Indian legal situation can get so complicated and i've gotten it wrong before so i'm not going to pretend to act like an authority on this just like fyi so but my 
understanding is that the guy putting forward this petition is like basically trying to get the government to make it a bigger deal than it already is and the government across many states in india is already making this a very big deal but they're saying no now we need the federal government to get like on board with how serious this is and there have been people who have come forward and tried to um put up uh, opposition to this petition that this guy put forward including a rationalist society from south india so that tells me that there's like a little bit more going on here that meets the eye and there was an update that happened where basically the um my understanding is the higher court ruled that the um the way in which the state government was trying to enforce a magistrate to get involved with religious conversions like wasn't necessarily going to hold but then another justice came in and said like no we're going to hear this again so there's still more to go forth but like the central question is kind of like how much does the state belong in the matter of someone's religious conversion and for me personally i think it should go without saying that it shouldn't be at all but this becomes more complicated in india when for example if you're from a, a scheduled caste or backward caste as they're called and you convert to a of christianity you're going to lose the state subsidies that you receive that you previously had when you were acknowledged as a backward caste or whatever within Hinduism. So the state already is involved in that kind of way, just as an example. I mean, and also many different ways, especially marriage laws. And so it gets very complex. But India does have a history of people using religious conversions to incentivize people who are very genuinely needy. And I do find that very, very predatory. And so I can't come out and say like, oh, this is completely off base because this has been something that has historically happened to like a, throughout India's history. It is a predatory practice. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.